Hello all, my name is Rujita Vasi and this is my project presentation for the course EEL 6512 Image Processing and Computer Vision for University of Florida under Dr. Deping Mo. My project topic is Solving Jigsaw Puzzle Using Computer Vision. As we are all familiar with, familiar with what a jigsaw puzzle is and we have all at one point solved a jigsaw puzzle by assembling the pieces to complete one big image. But as you all might not know, this is also a very attractive topic for the researchers in computer vision field since the past decade. I got interested in choosing this topic mainly because it has potential applications including reassembling of damaged documents, stitching satellite images into a map, and restoration of images from of archaeological artifacts. The more recent papers on this topic focus on using deep learning techniques to create an automatic jigsaw puzzle solver. But for this project, I will be using pure computer vision techniques to develop my algorithm. So uh, my algorithm for the, the problem definition is uh, I have an input image of disassembled puzzle pieces, jigsaw puzzle pieces, and I want the output to be a solved puzzle in output. So for this algorithm, I have uh, taken a few assumptions while developing it. The first assumption is that the puzzle, uh, final puzzle output needs to be rectangular in shape. The second assumption is that all the puzzle pieces are canonical. That means they are squared pieces with four distinct corners and the distance between any two corners of all the pieces is equal. The third assumption is that the puzzle pieces in the input image needs to be of same for the same output image. So there cannot be two possible output images for one given input image. Taking these assumptions, I have designed the algorithm which contains four major stages. First stage is image segmentation and pre-processing. Second stage is puzzle piece characterization. Third, third stage is puzzle assembly. And the last stage is puzzle piece transformation and image stitching. Let's look at each stage in detail and understand what are the steps taken. Inside the first stage of image segmentation and pre-processing, I read the input image and create a binary mask using thresholding. The threshold value is taken as 220, so all the pixel values greater than 220 are assigned 0 and the rest are assigned 1. Then I perform morphological transformations such as erosion and dilation to remove the white noise and to sharpen the image. Once I have this binary mask, I obtain the masked image by multiplying the input image with the binary mask. Using the binary Im image, I can get the contours and once I know the contours, I am drawing bounding boxes on the masked image where the contours are detected. So as you can see for the earlier input image, this is the binary mask, this is the masked image and these are the contours detected. Now you can see for each bounding box, we have one puzzle piece. So we can save this bounding box, all the in all the array inside the bounding box as one different image. So that way we get images for each piece. Once we have the image for each piece, I am performing the distance transform on each piece to get the centroid of the piece. So on the distance transform, the, pix the point with the maximum pixel value is the centroid. That way I am calculating the centroid for all the puzzle pieces. Once I have the centroids, I am calculating the edge using canny edge filter. So for each puzzle piece input image, I am applying the canny edge filter to get the edges information and I am storing all the points in the edges in an array. Once I have that, I am calculating the distance of each point on the edge with respect to the centroid and saving it into another array. This array is passed on to the Sci science python's find a peak function to find the peaks or to detect the peaks in the array and plot them. This helps us in detecting the corners of the puzzle piece. And that way I get the corners of the puzzle piece. As you can see the leftmost and the topmost pixel in the detected peaks is assigned the uh, corner number as zero. And then uh, in the clockwise manner, I am assigning the corners, the other numbers. Once I have the corner information, I am detecting the or uh, I am dividing the edge detected by the canny edge filter into four distinct edge images. 
this is also done by using the corner information because we know that corners um, uh, one edge lies between two corners so the angle formed by the two corners with the centroid um, is the given range and all the points inside should have the angles in between that range so that gives us each edge and we can form the edge images I'm also storing the color information of each edge into the color vector which will be used later when we are connecting the pieces. The next third stage of the algorithm is puzzle assembly and it is the most important stage because here uh, the expected output is that uh, we get to know all the rows are fetched as to which piece connects to which piece. So the first step of this stage is classifying the pieces of the puzzle into th three categories. Um, classifying if it is a corner piece. A piece is a corner piece if it has it has more than one straight line edges. So generally a corner piece of the puzzle will have two straight line edges and hence those will be the corner category pieces. The edge piece always has one straight line edge and the remaining pieces which are neither corners nor edges are the regular pieces. We also check that if we have detected four pieces in the corner category so that the puzzle is valid or else we stop the algorithm. Now that we have all this information, we can calculate the dimensions of the whole puzzle, the puzzle width and puzzle height. After this, let's discuss what is the strategy to select the potential matching pieces. Always when I am, always we are, when we are assembling the piece, we start from row one and piece one. So, Generally, the piece one of the row one will always be a corner piece. So we start from the corner piece. Initially, the row length is unknown and hence the potential matches for all the pieces in the row one are either the edge pieces or the corner pieces. Similarly, for the last row, we know what is the row length. So if we can calculate if the piece that we are considering or that for whom we are finding the potential matches is the second last piece, then the potential matches for that piece are only the corner pieces. Else, the potential matches are only the edge pieces. So, for example, if this is the last row and the piece we are considering is this piece. So, since this piece is not the second last piece of the row, we know that it the potential matching pieces for this piece can only be edge pieces. And hence, we select only edge pieces to be compared. For any other row, unless the piece is not the second last piece, the potential matches are regular pieces. But if it is the second last piece, the potential matching piece is the edge piece. Once this is done, let's look at the strategy on how to compare the edges. So, if, uh, if we are comparing the edges of the pieces of the first row, then we compare the current piece of and the current edge with all the edges of the potential matching pieces and we sort them according to the score. One thing to note here is that we only compare those edges which are not puzzle edges because obviously the puzzle edge will not be connected to any other piece and hence we do not waste our computation in comparing that edge. For any other row, there are two things to be considered. Let's assume we are at the row 2 and we want to find the second piece of the row 2. So for that we need to do two comparisons. We need to find the potential puzzle matches for row 2 piece 1 and also we need to find the potential puzzle matches for row 1 piece 2 because the piece 2 in the row 2 gets connected to the piece 2 in the row 1 as well and also with the piece 1 in row 2. And hence, we have to find two scores and the piece which uh, matches both or which satisfies both of these conditions is chosen as the best piece. Even here, we only compare those edges which are not puzzle edges because puzzle edges don't get connected to any other edge. Now, what is the strategy of comparing and choosing the best match? So, there are two methods which I have selected. One is comparing the edge shapes and the second is comparing edge color. In edge shape comparison, the edge, edges which are to be compared, I get the images of those edges and I find the score based on addition of the bitwise XOR. So as you can see, for piece 2 edge 0 and piece 2 edge and piece 6 edge 3, this is the XOR image, whereas for piece 2 edge 0 and piece 6 edge 0, this is the XOR image. 
here obviously the sum of pixels will be low and hence this is uh, this indicates a good match the best match is obviously the sum of scores uh, and the one with the minimum final score is the best match now let's look at the strategy to check if we have finished getting all the pieces of the row so there are three cases where this can be where we can know uh, if we have completed fetching all the pieces in the row so if the current piece is, is in the corner category this applies for row 1 or the final row where if we know if we have reached to a piece which is a corner piece we know that we have finished fetching that row or second case is that we are not in the last row and the current piece is in the edge category so that way we know we have completed that row or the third case is that we are not in the first row and number of pieces in that row equal to the row length because in first row we don't know the row length once we have finished the first row we know what the row length is and then we can compare how many pieces are there how many pieces have we fetched in a row compare that with the row length if that's equal then we know that we have finished fetching that row now how to check if we have finished fetching all the rows so that's also very easy we keep an array of all the pieces and whenever every time we find a piece in some row we remove that piece from that array so when the array becomes empty we know that all the rows have been fetched so the, these above steps have been repeated for the example which i have selected and this is the how the output looks here as you can clearly see if the piece 2 edge 1 connects with piece 4 edge 1 the piece 2 edge 0 connects with piece 6 edge 0 the piece 6 edge 3 connects with piece 5 edge 1 and so on once we have this information uh, we can transform the images using rotation matrices and warp of in function and shift it to a new position because we know that uh, the first piece of the first row goes to the corner we can form the transformation matrix such that those edges are transformed to the corner of the output image similarly we can repeat these steps for all the pieces and get the transformation matrix once we get the transformation matrix we transform each puzzle piece into the output image and this is how the transformation and image stitching looks like this is the final output that we obtain now let me show you how my project uh, code works so this is the code I have written for the project which is written in Python. Once I run the code, first I get the input image, first I show the input image, the binary mask of the input image and the mask image which I get. This is the first stage that is image pre-processing and segmentation. Once this first stage is finished, I get the characteristics of each puzzle piece. And what are those characteristics? That is the centroid, the corner points and the edge and I display it here in the images as shown. I also display it in the uh, masked image where I have detected the corners and the centroid. As you can clearly see, all the corners detected and the centroids are detected correctly for this image. So this way we know we can proceed with the further steps of puzzle assembly because if one of the corners is missing or one of the corners is not detected correctly, then there is a high probability that the puzzle assembly would not be done correctly. Hence, this is a very crucial step and you should make sure that all the corners are detected correctly. The next stage, stage is puzzle assembly and I'm printing statements as to when the assembly is completed. When the assembly is completed, my output is this big picture which shows the connected outputs and I'm also saving the GIF into the results folder. This is how my result folder looks like where I'm storing the information of each piece such as the distance transform, the centroid, the corners, uh, the corners plot which looks as follows and also uh, the transformation of how the puzzle piece is transformed and also the edge images this i have stored for all the pieces and also i am storing uh, the final gif of how the puzzle pieces are being connected as you can see this project works on the given input image which is a six uh, six piece puzzle Although I have written this code for a large number of pieces as well, but due to time limitations, I was, I was unable to complete the testing for other images. So for now, you can see that for the given input image, the, work, the code works perfectly fine. The latest stages would be to, involve, to add another puzzle piece and test it on that as well. Thank you.